This is the General Instruments SP0256AL2 Narrator Speech Processor Chip. It was popular in 8-bit computing back in the 80s. It was used in the DKtronics speech synthesizer and the SSA1 speech synthesizer for the Amstrad. It works by combining sounds or allophones to make English words. For instance, if I would like to say the word welcome, I can use these six allophones. These six allophones have a particular English text that goes with them to symbolise the approximate sound and also the hex code needed to play that allophone. And when they're combined together, I get... The most challenging part of this project isn't building it or getting it to work. It's finding a genuine SP0256AL2 chip. I purchased at least three dud chips. For instance, this one is clearly marked correctly, but it isn't an AL2 chip, it is a 012 Mattel Intellivision, which plays predefined set of words, like Mattel Electronics Presents. Totally useless to me. The second chip I bought just froze at 80, and when I got my third chip that didn't work, I decided to get a refund. The seller asked me to smash it first before refunding it, as if I was going to resell it anyway. I got the hammer out and with great joy cracked it open. If you want to purchase a SP0256AL2 chip and the first two chips, they look genuine chips, pretty expensive, 60 bucks for them. The next one, I reckon that's a fake chip. Scrolling down a bit further, fake, fake, and more fake. A bit more fake, maybe the ones in the middle are okay. Another fake one to the right. Probably fake there, $127, that's a lot. So I would avoid eBay and AliExpress to get these chips. Another fake one there. If you want a genuine SP0256AL2 chip, then go to signstore.co.uk. Here on the website, click electronics on the left, and then scroll right down to the very bottom of the store and here you would find the speech chip priced at £9.50 which is really reasonable for the rarity of this chip. Having markings like this on the chip can help identify a genuine speech processor. Now you have the precious chip, let's look at how we can wire it up to the Z80. Okay let's have a look a bit more closely at the IC of the speech processor. First, it contains an ALU, which essentially takes in data, finds the bit of speech pattern in the 16K ROM, processes it, and sends it out to uh, the digital out pin. Okay, pin 1 is ground, pin 7 and 23 are both power. VDD can be optionally powered down if the chip isn't being used. We have two reset lines. They essentially are tied together, active low, standby. Standby is an out pin, and if this is high, it indicates that the, the chip is inactive and it's not talking, but with a low, it will indicate that the chip is being currently used and an output is being sent out. This pin could be useful to send back to the CPU to tell the CPU to wait as the chip is busy. Load request, that's kind of the opposite of standby. Essentially, active low means that the chip is ready to have data sent to it and a high on that pin indicates that the input buffer is full. Then we have our eight data addresses. They are input pins and they indicate which of the speech entry points that we want to use. So we have two oscillator pins for a crystal oscillator that can be tied together. One is an in and one is an out, but if you're just using one of them, the pin 27 is the input. Digital out, this is the pulse width modulated output of the speech pattern. 
and this pin is connected to eventually an amplifier and a speaker. Address load, this is like a chip select pin. A negative pulse on this input would load the eight address bits into the input port. When this pin pulses low, the data that's sitting on the address lines will then get processed. Strobe enable is normally tied high by default. If it is low, then the address load isn't used and anything that appears on the address line is automatically processed. But usually this is tied high. And the last pins, they involve serial input. You can connect an external ROM with a bit more data to use if you would like, and it uses these pins. We're not going to use them. And test is set to low. So how do we connect this all up to the Z80 computer? It's pretty simple. So this is the circuit that I'll be using to connect to the Z80 microprocessor. It is designed by Craig Hart. Thanks Craig from Talking Electronics. It actually follows a similar pattern to what the data sheets say for the chip in terms of having some sort of input here from the microprocessor and then just the standard low pass filter amplifier and speaker. So it's really straightforward. The clock from the CPU is connected directly to the oscillator pin. Reset is connected straight to the standby reset and the reset pins. Strobe, this is the port select. ALD is similar to a chip select. Active low. I've got this connected to port 5 via our address decoder. And standby here, this is an output pin, an active low standby, goes to the wait pin of the CPU. This will ensure that the CPU pauses while the processor is busy talking. Otherwise, the processor doesn't know that the speech is still going and it will miss a lot of the data sent to it. So this is important to have some sort of wait signal back to the CPU. We have SE, strobe enabled, and power connected to five volts. And we have D7, D8, and test connected to ground. We don't need to use D7 or D8 because in terms of the ROM included on this chip, it doesn't have that many speech patterns to retrieve. And the digital out, pulse switch modulated out, just goes through a five kilohertz low pass filter into a variable resistor to control the amplitude, and then straight into a standard amplifier, LM386, pretty standard setup there, and then to a speaker. An interesting design feature here is that the power to the amplifier is controlled by this transistor here. So when the chip is not busy, so standby is high, this will deactivate the PNP transistor and turn the amplifier off. And when standby is low, it's speaking, it will then trigger the amplifier to turn on. It was indicated in the documentation that there was a bit of a clicking sound when the amplifier was continually on. Although this particular design is slightly unusual than the design that the data sheets show you. Okay, so this is the final board. Got the speech chip, got the variable resistor for the volume, amplifier chip speaker, got the four connectors here, control lines back to the Z80, and I've got this expansion here. It's really just sending the data bits only from the CPU. It's a bit overkill. Again, you can design it your own way, depending on what system you have set up. All right, let's plug this into the Z80 computer. All right, so this is my setup. It's the Talking Electronics Tech 1D with the Z80 microprocessor, single ball computer, keyboard, address, data bytes. It's a great little hobby board computer to learn how to program the Z80. One of the limitations is its expansion. It just feeds through a standard expansion port or a, a ROM chip, so address and data lines only. All the CPU lines are kind of there, but not all of them are there. So I've had to create this sort of crazy sort of assembly here of wires to get more code and more features to this board. If I scroll up or move the camera up, you can see the speech chip here and the speech board connected with the four control lines and through the pins beneath here just the data lines 
And I've also got the SIO here connected so I can transfer data from my computer to the speech chip real easily. This is just an expansion board that I've created and a whole bunch of wires. Just ignore that. It's connected. So let's give it a go. The Talking Electronics magazine has a test program that demonstrates how to use this chip. And it's a pretty straightforward Z80 table lookup routine. Let's quickly go through it. First you load HL with the start of the lookup table, which is data here. So there's the data label. And here is the allophone data. And then we load A with the contents of HL. So the first value will be OD. Is it FF, which is the symbolizes the end of the table? If it is, then wait for a key input. So it just as a halt. And then when a key is pressed, it just restarts to the start again and repeats whatever is sent to the speech processor. Otherwise, A is sent out to the port. For instance, this the port I use is 05, but it could be whatever you've set up on your uh, own Z80 processor. And then we just increment HL to the next location, which is E17, and we loop again. So jump back to loop get the value for A, which is 17, and it just keeps going. Pretty straightforward outputting. But I thought to myself, you know, this is straightforward, but I think there's a better way to do this. There is a command called OTIR. And OTIR automatically outputs the contents of HL to port C, B times. So all we need to do is set up HL and BC, and use OTIR, and it will send it out. So if you want to save a few extra bytes, this is my routine that I've created to send out a sequence of allophones to the speech processor. Pretty straightforward. HL is the same, just load it to the start of the allophone table, which is down here. And then we load BC, and you can do this in one go. You don't have to load B or C separately. Although the tricky part here is that I need to know how many bytes are included in this table. Now, potentially you could put the first byte as the B value, so it could be, you know, 17H, whatever it is, you can, put it, you can put it as a first, or in this case here, because I'm compiling it on my own local compiler, I've just got a label at the end of the table, end allophone, and at the start. So to work out B, I just subtract the start of the table, allophones, to the end of the table to get the size of this list to B, multiplied by 256, that shifts it up to the B register, and then I add the port value. So again, the port value is five. And then I just call OTIR, straightforward. Once that's finished, I just do a halt command. When a key is pressed, it just go back to the start again. Okay, I've keyed in the example from the Talking Electronics magazine, which says the words talking computer. Let's play it. What about playing the months of the year? Let's give that a go. And here is the list of all the allophones on the ROM for the AL2 chip. There are 64 different allophones that you can use to create the words. And it gives you the allophone symbol like OY, a Y E H, the address data to send to the chip to get that particular allophone out. Uh, here it's in decimals on the left hand columns here. And also gives you an example word. So for instance, over here, R R stands for sounds similar to the word in the R in brain, brain, and F F for f food. So you can combine all these different allophones to create almost any word in the English language. So here's a program that plays all the allophones. It plays them twice and then moves to the next allophone. There's 64 allophones. Takes about a minute and 40. If this is a bit boring, please skip this section. Here we go.
It's all right just putting a few words together in terms of the allophones, but how do you actually do that? I mean, they're just random little sounds. You've kind of got to work it out yourself. There is some guide in the data sheet. It goes through how speech works and the allophones and how to use the allophone set. And then it has typical numbers and words. So for instance, zero is Z, Y, R, and O, W, so zero. So this helps building sentences together, days of the weeks, months, letters, and a few common words. So this document's provided on my GitHub account. You can go through this and it goes through a lot of details about the elephones and how they work in particular for English. But to me, I thought this is pretty limiting. Let's say I want to produce a thousand words. What about 10,000 words? What about a hundred thousand words? What about all the words known in the English dictionary? So fortunately for me, the guys at CMU, Carnegie Mellon University have produced this pronouncing dictionary, which contains a whopping 134,000 words that have been mapped with allophones. Now the particular allophones that they use aren't the, the exact same ones that the speech chip, the AL2 chip uses. So I decided to create a C program that if you type in some text, it will then return the, the allophones that are needed for the speech chip. And here's my program. Text to allophone, type sentence to convert. So. This is a test. You can put in uh, PP for pause, put some more text in there, and EOF if you like. Press return, you get the allophones for the SPO256 AL2 chip, separated by dots for word pauses, and also the output in binary that you need to send to the, the chip itself. So you can go absolutely crazy with this little program. You can put in whatever you like. If it doesn't recognize the word, then it'll give you some question marks. But with over 100,000 words, you should be able to find something that fits. One of the odd things about the dictionary, if I put in exclamation mark, press return, it will actually say the word exclamation point and control D to exit. There are some command line options that you can set to output uh, the code to a binary file. So minus B, you can set the port you want to use. So let's say uh, five by default. And you can also display the allophones as a similar format as a DB. So put in D. So if I type in a sentence like this, I get the allophone output as in, a, in text. I get the hex codes for the allophones and I get the lines that I can cut in, cut and paste straight into my assembly program on my computer, compile it, create the binary, and send it out to the computer. So I'm pretty happy with the uh, results of this output. All right, so something interesting here just to finish up. I was in a chat forum talking about speech processes. One person suggested, can you use the SBO256 as a music chip, play music? I thought, well, maybe you can put the allophones together to create some sort of interesting beat or sound. So I tinkered with it, and this is what I've come up with. Hit go. As you can hear, it's not the greatest. It's not like the art of noise or anything. But if I had a bit more time, I can probably create something slightly more interesting. Well, thanks again for watching. I hope you found this video interesting on the speech processor. It's a really easy setup for the Z80. If you've got your own Z80 microprocessor, your board, you can even connect it to the back of an Amstrad via the parallel port. And now you can relive that 1980s talking computer that you've always wanted to have. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.